And now it's time for the All Blacks to open their account in 2021 at Mount Smart Stadium against Tonga this Saturday. And for Ian Foster and his team, it's the next opportunity to inspire another generation of All Blacks. The team, we are back together. JK's smiling and smirking away there. We'll talk about the next well, generation. What's, what, what sort of opening was that? What was that last bit? Over? I think this is the next generation of All Blacks. You obviously disagree. So You'll get your chance. This next test series is going to be the inspiration for the next... Yes, towards as we go towards the next Rugby World Cup. You can just keep your powder dry just for a moment. Hannah, Mills, Hannah, let's talk about it. This is the first test for the All Blacks. How do you think they'll approach, not just this first week, but the next three? Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? I reckon... Um... They have to choose some experience, but I think they can reward some people that played really well through Super, super Rugby in these first couple of test matches. Do you see it the same way, Mills? Yeah, I, I see that. See the similar. I think you do. You introduce a couple of new new guys in there, um, but there is a sort of a bulk of a lot of the experience that you can still sort of you know, pull out. Some guys returning. I think you get, give them an opportunity to get back into the swing of test match footy, and now is a perfect chance to be able to do that. So I'm obviously hopeful that we're going to see new faces. J.K., you've talked about at length it's time to pick on form. And at the moment, the form is super rugby form. Do you think the selectors are going to reward that? Or for this first test match of the year, are they going to go back to their experience? And saying that, they've got a number of injuries already. How do you think they approach it? Well, I disagree with, with all of you. Brilliant. I, I think it's... That's how you start every show. No, I don't. I don't. I've been really good just lately, <laughs> to be fair. Because I just think, and it's not Tonga's fault, um, I still think we've got eligibility issues. I mean, apparently there's 15 guys that have been playing club rugby and they're going to play a test match against hardened, hardened uh, super rugby um, finalists, especially the Blues. But, <laughs> <laughs> but my, my problem is I don't think we're going to learn too much in the first few weeks. I don't understand why we didn't... Um, the Māori played Samoa and then Samoa's second game would be against the All Blacks would be a little bit better. So I don't understand coming in cold like that. However, saying that, I think that we might as well just take the opportunity to get some guys out there and see how they go. What will we learn? I think very little until we get on later into the tournament when teams can play a few games and, and start competing. All right, the biggest talking point coming out of uh, selection, probably going into this game, is going to be the midfield, the number of players who are out and available through injury. Braden Enor was the latest one. Of course, no Anton Leonard brown Hannah, do you see a solution, or is it just last man standing? <laughs> <laughs> well, at 13 it is, isn't it? We're um, certainly light at 13. I think we've got some really good options through the, through the back line, but 13 we're certainly light. And um, so are, are you, like JK, going to keep bleating <laughs> on about the fact that it's Rico Ioani? Is that the, the way you'd go? Yeah, I think so. I think Haveli and... Uh, Rico in the midfield for me. It's a blessing in disguise, really, isn't it? I think now is an opportunity. You know, when they always talk about taking your, you know, your, your, your opportunity when it sort of comes here, this is now, you know, for Rico to take and, and, and also David Harbili in, in terms of their combination. Um, so that would be the natural the fit. My only concern is that is you know the defensive effort. You know, the you know how are they going to go? Who is going to be the person that dominates? Because we love, we love seeing this. We'll see a lot of this against Tonga, you know, his, his initial flair and being able to, you know, express himself and, and make busts. But from me, and when I go to your point, JK, it's who's going to be the person that sort of defends and sits someone on their backside that we sort of always have had for the, for, for the All Blacks. And this is a good chance now to do it against a Tongan team that will be sort of uh, direct and, and physical. So I suppose that there would be what I'm looking for in terms of, you know, what we learn. Um, but the two guys together, I think now is a good chance to sort of mould that combination together. Why are you so convinced about Rico Yuani long term in the centre position? Just because of his out and out pace. I think, I think he's still getting to grips with the defensive line and, and just getting really confident. He'll put a big hit on when he's really, really confident defending at 12, where he's got someone that he's that he's really confident with, and I think that could be Havili. I just think, and sometimes he tries a little bit too uh, too much on the outside, so I like to see him attacking the inside shoulder a wee bit more, but he's just got out-and-out pace. Now, before the last World Cup, we were talking about having to compete with real pace out wide, right? Um, and I just think if we want to have something X-factor, you imagine it. You've got someone who's organising you well at 12, you've got pace at 13, 14, 11... 
It's, and it's different comms, and you, you, you'd understand that too. Like the thing is, when you when you're sitting out in the wing, so it takes a bit of maturity in that posi uh, that position, that centre role. It takes a bit of maturity to be able to understand sort of what messages you need to feed into the, your second five or your ten, compared to being out wide when you're just waiting for the ball and saying, "Hey, there's space." Now you've got to organise. So he's got to actually help organise and and give those messages to someone like a Harvey or a Moonga or, or a Barrett who's in there. And that's where maturity comes into it. And you can only gain that by playing that position. He's had a couple of years now. Now with, with, with the Blues. He's had, taken on a leadership role, which I think is fantastic. Now is his chance to step up to the big time and grow that, you know, grow that in an environment where it's possibly been given to him there because of the injuries. Well, so, did you say let's Barrett? assume that happens. No, let's assume that happens. Right? I was wondering which one. <laughs> well, well, there's plenty of them. Uh, when you're naming the team Barrett, Barrett and Barrett, uh, look, it's been said already, Hannah, the fact that Geordie Barrett is the option at the moment to possibly cover the midfield. You've been saying this for a while, he's capable. Do you see the capabilities there? Does he have the right skill set? And is it still a matter we're still asking him to do something he hasn't done for a while. Yeah, look, I, I probably don't see Geordie in the midfield. I probably see him without Rico on the wing. We need a big, powerful winger. And I'd like to see him out on the wing filling that role. He's a little bit taller uh, than the rest of the wingers we've got. He's good in the air. He's got a good skill set. He can come and take long-range penalties. I, I probably see him use it, used in that role more than in the midfield within these test matches. So that's going to be a great selection debate, but can you start talking about who's going to start at fullback? You've been talking about Geordie Barrett, and his form through Super Rugby was outstanding for the Hurricanes. But maybe at the moment the numbers with Damian McKenzie. Do we lose something, or is it a matter of, and this is where you keep talking about it as well, are we in danger of moving players out of their specialist positions? Well, I think with the loss of the midfield, Geordie goes straight to the wing. He, you know, I think he's the in-form fullback. Once again, I'll repeat, I don't think this is going to come down to a three-point victory where you need to kick a 55-metre goal kick at the end of the game, like could happen in your World Cup semi-final, quarter-final. So I still think his kicking game, his ability to kick long goals, um, is really, really important at the tight next level. But with losing the, the centres, I think he goes straight on to the wing. Um, I think they put d on at uh, <laughs> at uh, at fullback, and um, and they'll bring the, you know they'll bring Bowden on late somewhere. We're always talking combinations, so I, you know we've got plenty of experience at lock. And you talk about the fact whether or not they introduce <coughs> Brody Retallick straight back into the mix, but the skipper Sam White is going to be there. But the biggest debate we've probably had pre coming on air is what's going to happen in the loose forward trio, Hannah. And that's is that a hard one to pick given the versatility of all of the players? Yeah, I think the decision for the coaches is actually where you play Artie and the rest of it falls from that. So if you play Artie at seven, um, then it's a different makeup that, that fills the rest of those loose forward roles. Or if you play him at eight, again, the same kind of combination chat comes in. I'd personally like to see him at eight uh, and start Dalton at seven uh, and ha put some fresh blood in there and put Blackadder at six. No, I mean, for me... <laughs> <laughs> you looked at this, no, did no, you? No, like, no one wants to take ownership for me, of this. For me, want to win a World Cup? The absolutely world-class, game-changing number eight. And I think Artie is an outstanding number eight, but I think he's a better seven at that level. And I reckon you've got to play Hoskins from now until the World Cup so he gets there with 30-odd test matches, right? Because I think his acceleration off the mark... His ability to take a bad scrum and get over the advantage line, his ability to do that out wide is very special. Now, Artie can do that as well, but you imagine him on the right side and Artie on the left side in attack, right, on the fringes. And I just think Artie wants to play seven. Your captain's out. Just play him there. All right, if I said this to you, right, and this is when I talked about the next generation, he's part of the next generation for me, right? It's about oh, I thought you were about kids watching. No, I didn't well, think you were talking about the kids watching. Well, some watching of these guys the are kids in terms of their experience at the highest level. I want to know then how you're going to incorporate all of the skill set into the way the All Blacks play because I feel for a long time, Mills, we were very much focused on a couple of teams that have put us under a lot of pressure, both England and South Africa, and we ended up trying to counter what they were doing versus actually showcasing a skill set that we do have, and we started to try and invent a way to win. Yeah. And I look at some of these talented players, the likes of your Jacobsons, the Satutus. How are you going to use Brody Retallick now coming back? Because, remember, his frame's different. Cody Taylor on the edges. I want to see us play differently and play to our skill sets versus chasing one or two wins that we might have in three years' time. It's always a tough one, isn't it? Because you want to evolve. And when you look at other, what's happening on the other side of the world, but sometimes you often neglect 
um, you know, your, your positives, you know, your strengths. And our strengths has always been the skill set of our of our players, whether you've got a number one on your back with it or the number 15. I think they possibly went away from that, you know, um, that, uh, you know, and also balancing that up in terms of, you know, bolstering up our, our front row. Now, we, we talked about, I think, you know, the last World Cup that they weren't mobile enough. And that perhaps was the case because they wanted to actually structure our game a little bit more. So, you know, it's, it's always hard when you're sitting there as a coach. Ian Foster and his coaching team would have had a good chance to actually reflect on how Super Rugby Aotearoa and also the trans Tasman went. So, uh, implementing the game plan is a, is a perfect way to get out there. And, you know, you're not going to get everything perfectly right, but here's, here's a time now to start. And when you're looking, I agree, with, I agree with JK. I think you leave Hoskins there because of his ability to be able to, you know, get off the back in attacking areas. You've still got, you still got Artie there to be able to go in a defensive effort when you're, when you're coming, you know, hard in on your, on your own line and come out because he's so good at doing that. So, you know, they, they mix and match. And, that, and that's probably one of the strengths of New Zealand rugby at the moment as well is the fact that we've got guys that can play anywhere in that loose, loose trio department. The thing is, how do you get that balance in there so you're not ch chopping and changing week in, week out? Because I think that causes disruption. Well, I think part of the problem too, also retrospectively looking at the World Cup, you know, we, we had a really tight game at Twickenham. You and I were there. We went and lost in Ireland. And that, I believe, put a probably a bit of a spanner in the works and the coaching staff came back and said, well, what are we going to do? And then we started sort of changing a couple of things that we did. And losing to England probably hurt a wee bit, but I, I'm like I'm like you, Mills. I don't know what you think, hanging about. These guys would have gone away and thought about it, and I don't disagree with you. We need to come up with something new for the next World Cup. When we bring that out, I don't know because we don't have that much time. You know, like are we going to the Northern Hemisphere? Hopefully, we go this year, and we can actually go. Okay, let's take something, take something different. Well, Han, quite often in the very first test match of the year, they talk about the fact, you know, we've only had a short time together, we gave them so much information. Do we need to do that at this point of the season, given the fact that we know what's in front of us? What would you like to see out of these first three performances in regards to a team ethos and the way they approach the game? Yeah, I think it's really important how they approach these games, the systems, they, and to Mills' point, the systems and structures they put in place through these games that they can develop as they go into the test later on in the year. Um, What's really interesting to me is probably that inside back combination, and we haven't spoken about it yet. But um, who they do they test um, Christie at halfback? Who's at ten? Um, who's slotting in at fifteen? I think those combinations have to be really worked through to get to their team by the end of the year. And I think quite often that is where, like you say, you start your team. And, and I, I just look at it and go, you know, I, I think fundamentally I know what we're capable of, and that's why I look at it. And I'd like to see the challenge taken up with the fact that we've been such. I suppose, innovators of the game. But I want to see us play. I don't want to see us grind team games out. I want to actually see us be really clinical over these next three weeks. But you know what? Clinical doesn't mean it's not flashy. What it is is create space, find it and get the ball and move it there easily and make it look easy. Because in the past, I think we've won games like this, and it, we haven't made it look easy enough. We do, we do want to have that. We want that. We have that balance. But again, where have we struggled? Every single time we've gone against the, against the English or a big time game, it's our kicking. You know, you know the, the effect of our, the effectiveness of our kicking, the, the ability to be able to say, well, we have to actually grind this game out. And this, this is where I think we, we need a lot of work. And when you talk about Christie and the way he's played over the, you know, Super Rugby, you know, his, his kicking is outstanding. So when it becomes a grind and it sort of seems that boring, that's when we tend to get ourselves into trouble. So I think that's that's a part of our game that's been a, a weakness for, for many years because we just simply think it's boring.